Hello YouTube, Chris DeFugo Audiophile with you here again today. Got another system tour for you. And as you can probably tell, this is my bedroom. And I wanted to show you my bedroom 5.1 home theater system. And uh, this system has really come a long way over time. You know, many years ago, I had one of those cheap uh, home theater box. I think I paid like 85 bucks for it. And it was okay, but um, we have come a long way in the past decade or so with this uh, system in my room, and I'm really happy with it. I actually use this one almost more than my main system because, well, I use it every night when I go to bed. And with my vision struggles, it's easier for me to see this TV in here uh, being up close to a small one rather than using the large TV in my uh, main theater room. Uh, that, that system definitely gets louder, is better, uh, but this one's pretty good, and we'll get into that as the video goes on here. But I just want to start out by showing you my room. Uh, as you probably can notice, I do have room darkening curtains in here, and that's because of my vision struggles. Even a little bit of sunlight will bother me while I am trying to sleep, and so I had to get room darkening curtains along with many blinds to help uh, mitigate that issue so that I can sleep easier and not be woken up super early in the morning by just a little bit of sunlight and really even some of the ambient light at night can uh, impact my sleep and bother my eyes so that's just how I am my eyes are very sensitive to light and so that's something I have to deal with also you'll probably see there my uh, air conditioner still in we had a few warm days here in mid-September in southwest Wisconsin and we're supposed to have some more today it's very cool and, and uh, lovely outside but we have had some warmer days and it's nice to have an air conditioner in my room while I'm trying to sleep and keep me cool. So it is still in. I'll probably take it out here in a couple of weeks. So while I'm up here, I thought I would just show you my rear satellite speakers. I'll get more into what speakers these actually are in just a bit. You can probably see here that they are on a different plane. They're not level with one another. And that's just how it works with my furniture. I did try a um, stand over there in that corner but the speaker fell over a couple times that was actually my old speakers it wasn't these and I didn't like that I didn't like my speakers falling over and so I had to put it back on this bookshelf that I have there you can see the floor you might not be able to tell but it's just a little uneven there just just enough for the stand to lean and for it to fall over and so I wasn't a big fan of that and I just went back to this system what I probably should do is mount it on the wall there but uh, that's a project for another day so now i'm going to go set up the room for the rest of our tour so hang on just a minute all right so now we're going to go down inside here and it might get a little bit dark back in here i'd see that my light is on my phone which is good because uh this corner is very dark so to start here we have the heart of the system and that is my denon x1300 i picked this up last fall sometime around September, October. I can't remember exactly when. And um, I got this on eBay in used condition. And I think I paid like 324 it shipped. And this was a time when like the X1500 was going for $500. And so I didn't quite want to pay that much. Unfortunately, like a week or two later, I saw an X1400 on uh, eBay in like new condition for almost the same price. But oh well, the 1300 works just fine. I don't really know if it's missing anything that I need in this system, but unfortunately it did come in um, used condition. There's quite a bit of scuffs. You can maybe see them there. Let me see if I can get it on the front panel. It's kind of hard to get a good view back in here, but um, there's some scuffs. Also, one of the feet was busted off and I really couldn't get it back on because it was busted in half. That's unfortunate. I just have it sitting on that foot. So if, if you picked it up, the foot wouldn't come with you, you know, kind of annoying but really doesn't matter it sounds good it works great and it's hidden down here next to my bed on, on the floor on the stand and no one really sees it so it doesn't really matter i wish it was in better condition but hey at least it works you probably can see this wire here that's strung from the stand to the bed that is an ir repeater and i'll show you a picture of the other end it's in the uh, opposite side of my room but that is so that i can get remote signals down to the stack while I am watching uh, up in the bed. And on, honestly, I could point to the remote just about anywhere 
and it will pick up the signal and transfer it down here. I am having a little bit of issue getting it to send the signal to the Blu-ray player there. I just probably need to get some reflective material over here on my bed in order to do that. That's a project that I still need to work on to see if I can get that signal to hit all the components because it hits the receiver and the Apple TV just fine. And of course the TV, uh, that's another issue, but I just uh, have programmed in a power on off button and it takes care of that. So yeah, that is the heart of the system, my Denon X1300. So before we go up and talk about the rest of the components of my system, I wanna talk about this AC Infinity fan here. I picked this up a few months ago, not because I'm super worried about this Denon, like I don't want it that loud or hot because I'm laying right next to most of the speakers. It's more to push the heat away from me while I'm laying in bed, especially in the summer, I um, can feel the heat coming off this Denon. I don't as much now that it's down here, but still I do. And so this AC Infinity fan, it pushes the warm air back. And I think that will help the longevity of the receiver. Like I said, it is used as well as uh, just keep me a little bit cooler. And this is one of their cheapest models. It was 50 bucks. It doesn't really have a programmable thermostat. You basically set a mode and when it reaches 88 degrees, it, it turns on. You can have it on all the time, or you can have it so that it ramps the fan down as the temperature goes down. I just have it set to when it hits 88 degrees, turn the fan on full speed and cool it down. It's relatively quiet. I can hear it, but it's not like excessively loud and works great. And I'm glad that I added this to my system. So moving up, we'll talk about this Blu-ray player. Uh, as you see, it's one of those small and expensive Samsung Blu-ray players. The reason I have that is, first of all, I'm frugal, but also I had a larger one in here. And when I had the receiver and the um, Apple TV on top of it, it was pretty tight. And then I added in the Aircom AC Infinity fan there. It wouldn't all fit. And so I traded my sister this one for mine. I kind of wish I had that one back now as I had to uh, go like this in any way and put the den on down here. I might trade back with her. Actually, this one fits better in her stack because she has a pretty small TV stand and in a small corner of her room as you saw in her system. So I might actually trade that back with her, but it does work just fine. And like I said, it's challenging to get the remote codes to hit it. That's not really the fault of the Blu-ray player. And uh, then you'll see right next to it is my Apple TV 4K. This is the 2018 model, I do believe. And uh, it works great. I love it. It's awesome. It's fast. I don't even have a 4K TV. So that really doesn't matter. But um, I got this a couple years ago for Christmas. It's really what I use the most in this system. Every once in a while I do watch a movie. Like last night I watched Godzilla vs. Kong. Highly recommend that movie. Uh, and uh, it was rocking this place and uh, this room last night. But this gets the most use. It's a great piece of my system. All right, so now let's take a look at my speakers. And these are the Aperion Intimus 4 Series. I call them the 4 Series because they all have 4s in their name, but that means they have 4-inch drivers. And you can see the center channel here. It has actually, that's a 4-inch active, then it has the one-inch soaked on tweeter and then a four-inch passive radiator there. And that's, uh, I was kind of hoping for two fours, but it actually works quite well. It's a, it's a nice speaker. And so that's the Intimus 4C speaker there from Aperion Audio, great speakers. And then those are the 4B bookshelves. I left the grill on that one, but you can see it back there. I have four of those. And I got these for a song when in, um, in Aperion was uh, selling them. And you can hear the, AC Infinity fan just started up. Not sure how well you can hear that. I can hear it, but it's not that loud. So we're just gonna keep filming. And I love these speakers. They're, they're just awesome. They have great frequency response. They have huge soundstage and Im imaging. They get plenty loud in this scenario right here for me. I mean, beyond what I really need. And so they are just perfect. I was looking for a speaker in this room. I looked at the clips. Uh, reference cinema series. I looked at some the newer Mica RB series. I looked at uh, some Ascend Acoustics and some RBH. And these were the best deal 
and they just fit what I was looking for the best. Because you can see right there, it's really got to squeeze into a tight space, especially when it has some acoustic padding there. I have acoustic padding on all my speakers. You can see it back in there too. And the fan's already off. So that's my speakers. I, I love them. I got them for the whole thing was about $390 for all five of them. And you just can't go wrong. And here's my subwoofer. This is an SVS SB1000. I got this a couple years ago on one of their factory outlet sales. It is, they say it's a 12 inch speaker. I've also heard it's a 10 inch. I don't know. If it's a 12 inch, it's barely a 12 inch. I mean, that would include this surround right here or this um, bracketing right here, as well as the surround and everything maybe equals 12 inches, but I don't know. I'm skeptical. The driver's definitely not 12 inches. Anyway, this subwoofer is rated down to 20 Hertz and it definitely hits that in my room. This is a small room and I am sitting very close to it. So that makes sense that it can do that. I love it. It's the best subwoofer that I have ever had in this room. I tried uh, the big F12 and although it could slam, it just didn't hit low enough or get articulate enough. And so I replaced it for this and I paid, I think $370 for this on one of their Black Friday or factory outlet sale deals directly from SVS and I love it. I'm so glad that I got it. I wouldn't mind having another one, but it's not critical in this room. Maybe if I can find a good deal on one, I would get it, but they don't make it anymore. So that would be challenging. And before we talk about the last component of this system, my TV, uh, I wanted to show you the bracket here that I'm using. I got this on M Amazon. It's kind of ugly, but it does the job. As you see, it's hovering my TV above that speaker just perfectly. It might look like it, but nothing is touching. And this gets it uh, just in perfect range for my vision while I'm laying in bed. And I'll show you a view of that here in a minute. But for $35, I'm very happy with this um, bracket. I guess it's a monitor arm. It fits my needs perfectly. It's pretty easy to in install. It's just friction fitted there with some screw downs and then it connects very nicely to my Samsung television. And that ever so eloquently brings me to the television that I am using in this system here. This is a 24 inch Samsung 1080p LCD television. And I'm not sure if you can tell there in the shot, but the black levels are not very good on this TV set. Hi, Angel. Angel's hanging out with us. This is an older LCD Samsung television. I don't even think it has LED backlighting. It's certainly not 4K or QLED or anything like that. It's not HDR. It's just your basic LCD 1080p TV. And really, it works great. It fits my needs just fine. Do I wish it had better black levels? Yeah. I do, but I am really having a hard time finding a 24 to 27 inch television with the specs that I'm looking for that'll work in this environment for me. If you have a suggestion, feel free to put it in the comments below. I'm looking for something that does offer uh, 4K or at least 1440p and um, HDR with better black levels. And it has to be able to connect to a mount. So if you got any suggestions, I would love to hear them. Please put them in the comments below. This is a television that I am using. And one thing I want to talk about here is imaging and sound staging. And it is a challenge in this environment. As you can see, I am here with two speakers real close to each other. And if you look, I'll go over there and you can see in the corner, there is my left hand speaker. And it's at, at my foot. And so the imaging Although it definitely is noticeable, it's not great. And honestly, it really struggled with this setup here. I mean, um, it had my levels set kind of wacky. I had to go in and redo them myself. It set the rears way too loud and it set my center and sub way too low. So I had to go kind of level them in for myself and what, what I was looking for. So it is, it is much different than uh, what Odyssey set it. And uh, I understand it's a very challenging environment here and although I do not get very good uh, left to right imaging it does produce a fairly convincing surround sound field it's not perfect but it's good enough and I love watching movies here because 
Um, it's comfortable, I can see them well, and I do have some pretty decent sound. So it works okay for me. I know many would say, well, that's just not gonna work right. I could never handle uh, being in an environment like that with that type of sound field. But you know, I've gotten used to it. And these speakers, they, they try their hardest to image for me and do a pretty decent job. Better than some I've had here in the past, but it's not, it's not perfect. You know what? I'm okay with that. And you can see there's uh, Star Trek Deep Space Nine on Netflix, been watching through that. Great show, definitely not high fidelity, but great show and I'm really enjoying it. So this is the TV that I'm using. So the final component I wanna talk about here is my Harmony 750 remote. I actually purchased this from a buddy. Uh, it was an extra one of his. And so I think I gave him like 25 bucks for it. This was a few years ago. It was before they went out of business. So I am holding on to this remote for dear life as Logitech is no longer producing the Harmony remotes. And this remote is awesome. It works great here in my, my system. I have the activity set up and it is perfect. And so um, I hope it doesn't break anytime soon because as far as I can tell, there's not a great alternative on the market quite yet. I love using this remote. It's perfect for in here and suits me just fine. So that is my bedroom 5.1 surround sound system. I hope you enjoyed this tour. I thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it. Also, comment down below. Is there something in this system that you would change? You think I should uh, do differently? Something I could do better? And then check out my Patreon and buy me a cup of coffee. Remember, frugal doesn't necessarily mean cheap.